it is no surprise that Super Mario Maker 2 is the game that I'm looking forward to the most this year. And with last week's Nintendo Direct being a banger and adding a lot of features I wanted to see, it's finally time to say farewell to an old friend. Super Mario Maker 1. And for me, the best way of saying goodbye is to try to beat the game without touching a single coin. Obviously, as Mario Maker is an online game with millions of user-generated content, it would be impossible to complete such a task. And as opposed to Super Mario Maker 2, the first game doesn't have a story mode we can attempt. But one thing it does have are sample stages. Obviously, those stages are not connected to one another, so we'll actually be attempting to play them individually to try to see how many can be completed without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all 68 sample stages one after another and we'll try to get from the beginning to the end without touching one of those dirty coins. I also have to mention the fact that every level in the Super Mario Bros 3 theme ends with us touching the end card and automatically receiving one coin no matter what we do. But you know, to avoid having to eliminate all Mario 3 stages for the run without even playing them, this end coin will not count. With everything set in place, it's time to play and see if we can beat Mario Maker without touching a single coin. Here we go. Our first stop is a level called Ground, and as you'll soon realize, this level isn't special at all. The only part that could give out a little challenge is this one here with the spinies and the coins restricting your jumping options. It is however possible to jump in between both, so yeah, kind of easy. Underwater is our next stop, and this one is also quite easy, having its fair share of coins, but since the level is taking place underwater, you can just swim around the problematic coins or, you know, just simply walk under them. Castle is next, and it starts off with a couple of jumps featuring coins, but if you barely tap the A button, you can make it under without any issue. Now the real problem comes from this part with the lava lift. Basically, you have to land on the skull all the way to the right, as the lift starts moving once you hop aboard it. After a couple of tries, you'll do this jump and the rest is quite easy. Welcome to Airship, our first auto-scroller that starts off with a very annoying jump that you have to make. Just make a run for it and tap the jump button to fit right in between the airship and the coins. And after that, the rest of the level does have a couple of coins here and there, but nothing that will be a threat to the quest. Ghost House is the next stop, and this one is quite annoying. First, it contains a P-switch which turns all of the blocks into coins, but you know, you can thankfully just skip it. You'll soon reach this spot which wants you to jump in between the line of coins and the walls. And while it is possible to do it thanks to the cape feather power up, this next part wants you to hit invisible blocks in order to make it to the top. And sadly, those invisible blocks give out one deadly coin each. I tried to fly with the cape and while the first part can be done, there's no way you can keep enough speed to go in between two invisible blocks in such a narrow passage. And even if you'd be a Mario God and did it, the next part forces you to hit an invisible block to reach the exit door. We can't really go above the level and cheat it, so this one's sadly not possible. Sound effects is the next level, and the first issue comes right at the start, on that mushroom with the wiggler on top. This really restricts your movements, but you can either damage boost through the wiggler or do a crouch jump like I did there. Enter the Karibo shoe to reach this part with the spikes and the coins. This part is nerve wracking for sure, but if you really take your time, you can actually jump in between all of the coins and dodge them all. Enter the clown card and stay under all of the coins and you'll be done. Trax is our next stop and you'll soon see that this level is quite the problem. The first part with the tracks and coins is not very difficult, but as soon as we reach the treadmills, you'll soon see that it isn't possible to fit Mario on there without him touching at least one coin. It is a shame, because the rest of the level after that seems to be possible. Sub Areas takes place in a tiny ice cave, and you will soon see that the only exit out of here is through this green pipe, and sadly there are a bunch of coins right next to it. And it is not possible to dodge this final coin on the left there, so this one's also impossible. 
Pipeline to the other side is the next level we'll play and basically there are some coins over that Koopa there. Just bounce on his back to dodge them. Once you're up there, make sure to kick the Koopa shell all the way to the left as you know the right block contains a dirty coin. Once you're up the vine, dodge those easy coins and you'll then enter that green door. Make sure to hold right when falling down the exit door to avoid collecting those coins there. But don't go too far to the right or else you might pick up those three coins. Welcome to Blocktown, a level which is just super dumb. It's basically just three houses made out of blocks and bricks. Just enter the correct door and you'll reach the end in less than a minute. 1-1 Remix Ground is the next level and you'll soon recognize the classic 1-1 level from the original Super Mario Bros game. Just play it like you would the real game and you'll reach the end without a single coin. Spinning Boo Buddies is the shortest level you'll see today and all you have to do is to jump in between the spinning boos and the coins on rails. After a couple of tries, I found out that the best strat is to run for it as soon as the level starts, as all of the coins are aligned in a pattern that's easy to dodge and you can just walk in between those two boos there. Easy peasy. A Peace Switch's Journey is the game's attempt at showing you all of the crazy things you can build with blocks and treadmills and everything. Basically, you're supposed to follow the Peace Switch on its big adventure and hit it at the end to turn these blocks into coins. But you do realize that this would mean picking up deadly coins to reach the end, so sadly, this one's impossible. Switch It Up is the complete opposite of the last level, giving out P-switches to turn the coins into blocks. And while the first part is quite easy, the game then wants you to turn these blocks into coins to go down there. And the second part of the level has a very similar objective, which you having to go through those coins to reach the axe at the end. What a shame. 1-1 Remix Raccoon Mario is up and this one is, once again, a simple remix of the first level from Super Mario Bros 3. And just like we did with the original game, we can beat this level without any problem. 1-4 Remix Castle is a remake of the very first castle from the original Super Mario Bros game and just like its NES counterpart, it doesn't contain a single coin in your path. You'll easily reach the end, break the bridge and defeat Bowser. Blooming Goombas is up and this one does contain a couple of coins, but you can dodge most of them by just being careful with your jumps. And since the level is very short, it will be completed in no time. Perilous Vine Climb is next and this one features a grand total of zero coins, so just play it like you normally would and you'll complete it easily. 1-2 Remix Underground is the second level from the very first game, so just hit the blocks all the way to the top there and just cheat the level. Yep, it's that simple. All aboard Big Dry Bones Pirate Ship, some sort of bus level I assume? Enter the door all the way to the right to reach the big dry bones and just hit the switch and climb the vine to complete the level. Once again, no coins in here. Next up is Sunken Mario, which just as his name implies, is a Mario made out of blocks that sits underwater, waiting for you to just swim around it and voila, it's done. This next level is called Coinucopia. And as you can figure out by the name, it does contains coins everywhere. Coins coming out of pipes, coins on platforms, and although you can dodge most of them at first by being extra careful, go down this green pipe to reveal a dead end to this level. Yup, I don't see any way of dodging all of the coins in here. The rest of the level is not that difficult either, so it's a shame that the second part with all of those coins exists. 1-3 Remix Athletic is once again a remake of a classic Mario stage, and this one's also very easy. You'll be able to dodge all of the coins with no problem. Welcome to the Festival of Fire, a deadly level featuring tons of Lakitus throwing out fireballs at Mario, and as you can guess, that's all there is to this level, so there's actually no coins at all in here. Superstar Dash is next and this level wants you to grab a star and defeat all of those enemies while running super fast, but watch out for the jumps as they do contain coins, but if you crouch jump every time you can actually dodge them all and look super stylish while doing so. Kapow is next and um, this one might be a trap, coins in the sky, power block on the ground, uh oh. 
Obviously, if you ignore the power block, you'll clear this level immediately and without a single coin. Be Brave and Get Up Close is a very short level where you have to hit the block that's all the way to the right to get a star and clear the chain chumps. Just make sure not to hit any other blocks as all of the other ones contain coins. Attack Slack is an easy level where all you have to do is kick the green shell to defeat all of the enemies. No coins in here, let's move on. 5-3 Remix Shu Goomba is once again a remake of a classic Mario 3 stage. And just like the game it came from, this stage can be completed without a coin and without any difficulty whatsoever. 1-2 Remix Yoshi is a remake of a classic Super Mario World level and this one also doesn't have too many dangerous coins. So you can just play the level like you normally would and if you're being a little bit careful you'll be okay. Zigzag Lava Bubbles is very similar to the previous Lava Bubble stage, you know, the one with the Lakitos, and just like that previous one, this one doesn't have a single coin, so yeah. Go for the 3-up stump is a level where you have to bounce from wiggler to wiggler up until the end of the stage. Once again, no coins in here. Jump for it looks really scary at first. I mean, look at it. Fireballs, trampolines, coins, ugh. But while it may look dangerous, it's actually quite easy. Just bounce without pressing the jump button and you'll never touch a coin. Muncher is such a weird level. I'm unsure as to what this level is all about. Just hit the P-switch, make a leap of fade to the right and the end flagpole is right there. Clowning around is a fun level where you have to fly those clown carts while dodging all of the other clown carts that bounce you around. Basically, you will have to dodge all of the other flying carts and the coins and you'll be good. Creepy Crawl Bowser Tower features a couple of coins in your way, but to be fair, you can actually jump above the Bowser Tower, making this level very easy. 3-1 Remix Infinite 1-Ups is quite the easy level. And there aren't a lot of coins besides the one in the blocks there, just avoid hitting all of the blocks and you'll be good. Next up is 2-3 Remix Pyramids, and if you watch my Mario 3 without a coin video, you probably remember this one as it was quite the problem. The level in itself ain't that difficult, it's the ending that is a problem. You have to enter that pipe, but to do so, you're supposed to hit the Koopa shell to clear out the blocks in your way, but some of those blocks are filled with deadly coins. Just like we did in the original game, we'll have to grab a Super Leaf bar up in order to get rid of the Koopas and break the blocks ourselves, thus avoiding all of the blocks that do contain coins. Once that is done, this level is over. Bowser Retreats Mario Advances is a level featuring Bowser on a rail that retreats and you just advance and yeah, this level doesn't have any coin. Next, Easy Does It wants you to hop aboard the cart and gently navigate your way to the end. Once again, no coins in here. Music Notes is a very strange level containing note blocks and blue spinies. The flagpole is right there at the start, but I couldn't manage to reach it at first. I thought you had to use shells to break the bricks and hit the vine over there to climb up and make it, but turns out there's actually a propeller suit hidden right there. Hit the block, grab the suit, and this level is done. Conveyor Belt Sprint is another level with those treadmill platforms. You'll have to dodge plenty of coins on your way to the end, but sadly, the final part has those evil coins that make it impossible for you to reach the end without touching them. I tried running with all of the speed I could get, but it simply never worked. This one is impossible. Shell Shot is up and this is a very easy level if you just get rid of the green Koopas that are in your way. Find a Fire Flower is a dumb level where I suppose you're supposed to ground pound those blocks filled with coins up until you find a Fire Flower to defeat the Spinies, but a simple spin jump is all it takes to go above them. Shoe Factory does contain a lot of those beautiful red shoes. But that's pretty much it, no coins. Spiny Tower Destruction is once again a simple level where you just kick a Koopa shell to get rid of the enemies and that's it. Where are the coins? 7-2 Remix Piranha Plants does contain its fair share of coins. You can clear those coins with a short hop or even use a POW block to get rid of them. When you reach the pipes there, make sure to jump super high and not to fall in between those pipes, because once you fall there, you'll soon see there's lots of invisible blocks above your head. Once you enter that final pipe, the level is cleared. One Dash Airship Remix is a remastered version of the first airship level in Mario 3, 
The brand new mechanic here is the coins cannons. Oh wow, thanks. But seriously though, beside that single coin shooting enemy, the rest of the level can be cleared super easily. 8-B Remix Airship is our next up. And this one has a couple of flying coins with wings, but if you're being careful, these won't be much of a threat. Alright, next up is Danger Fire Bars. And Danger is right, as this level features lots of coins and fire bars. At first, this level might seem impossible, but you can actually make this jump and land right next to those coins over there. Hop on one of the fire bars blocks and squeeze your way to that platform right under the coins and then jump out of there to reach the end of the level. Whew, that was a fun one. Blaster Barrage features a couple of coins next to the cannons, but if you're being extra careful you'll be all good. Watch out for this final cannon that shoots flying coins and you'll be good. Dry Bones Stampede is next and in this one you'll have to just bounce from one Dry Bones to another to reach the flagpole. No coins in here. Chain Chump is another weird level that just uses bricks and blocks to form a chain chump looking type of things. Uh, this level has no coins. Bone Dungeon is a level where you have to jump from platform to platform while dodging the bones up until you reach the end. No coins in here either. Welcome to Underwater Automation, which I suppose usually wants you to stop moving as this one really looks like an automatic level, but we don't have time for this so let's just grab the flagpole. Up and Over is a trampoline party. Grab the trampolines and put them on top of one another to create a chain reaction and bounce to the other side while dodging the few coins this level has and you'll be okay. Even Trampoline's Dream of Flying is a flying trampoline party. Basically, just bounce from one trampoline to another without pushing the jump button and you'll never jump high enough to touch those coins up above. Roller Coaster is a level featuring the Blue Skull platforms, which moves super fast and I guess you're expected to just enjoy the ride, but it's filled to the brim with ugly coins. I tried jumping above them, but without a power up it is sadly not possible. It really reminded me of that roller coaster level when I was trying to beat Mario Bros U without a coin. <laughs> Except this Mario Maker one is actually impossible, sadly. 2-5 uh. Remix Chain Chumps, just like all of the Remix levels so far, is easy to beat and doesn't have any particular hurdles. 8-3 Remix Hammer Bros doesn't require any particular attention, just play the level like you normally would and that's it really. 6-3 Remix Ice has these coins you can dodge by just running under them. It does feature a couple of flying coins here and there, but you can just wait for them to pass by you and you'll be all good. Don't Delay is next, and this one basically doesn't contain a single coin, so you have nothing to worry about. Except maybe those saws that follow you around. Race to the Finish is an auto-scrolling stage forcing you to do very precise jumps, but Nintendo had the brilliant idea of putting coins literally everywhere in here. Forget it guys, this one is impossible. 8-4 Remix Castle Labyrinth is a remake of the final level from the original game. Basically, the main problem here is going to be this part where you're actually supposed to use the invisible block to reach the green pipe up there. Thankfully, there are two Koop Troopas bouncing around next to it. So you can actually bounce on a Koopa, then land on the pipe to then go inside of it and clear the level. NWC 2015-1 is the very first level that was played during the Nintendo World Championship Tournament back in 2015. And this level is super cool, except it's actually not possible to beat in this quest, as you have to jump from treadmill to treadmill to reach the end, and each of those platforms contains three coins, so it's a big oof for this quest. Dang it. NWC 2015-2 is up, and this stage doesn't contain too many coins and is quite easy. Up until this part, where you have the shoe and you're expected to bounce on those spiky wheels while dodging the flying coins. The thing is, when you're bouncing on those things, you're getting thrown left and right and you basically have no control over where you go. So it takes a bit of practice and a bit of luck, but it is actually possible to make it past this entire section without touching a single coin. And once this part is done, the rest of the level is quite easy. 
NWC 2015-3 is next and the real problem comes from this part of the level where the shell hits the P switch turning every blocks into a coin. But thankfully if you let the Koopa shell outrun the screen the P switch will not appear thus resulting in all of the blocks remaining in their current state. The rest of the level is actually quite easy so you'll beat it in no time. Hooray for glitches! Here comes the final stage, NWC 2015-4, which is fun and all, up until you enter this pipe and reach the second section. Uh oh, coins all over the place and sadly no space to dodge them. Yeah, this one's not possible. So there we go, we have completed all of the sample stages. I think it went pretty well, although we did have a couple of problems here and there. So. Is it possible to beat the sample stages in Super Mario Maker without touching a single coin? Well, out of the 68 stages that we played, we have managed to complete a total of 58, leaving 10 behind that were simply not possible. I think that's pretty good, that's like 85% of the stages that we managed to clear without a coin. I'm pretty sure that's at least a B plus on my report card, so I'm kind of satisfied with it. We are now two weeks away from playing the masterpiece that Super Mario Maker 2 is going to be. And if you were here with me two weeks ago, you saw me attempt to beat all of the sample courses in the first game without touching a single coin. I thought that was a great way of saying goodbye to the game, but now that it was confirmed that amiibo costumes won't make a comeback in the sequel, we have to say a proper goodbye to those as well. And what better way to do that than by trying to beat all of the event courses in the game without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all of the 46 event courses that are available right now and attempt to beat as many as we can without touching one of those dirty coins. You see this lovely coin counter up there? Let's try to keep it at zero when we can. Beating a Super Mario Bros 3 stage does give us a deadly coin no matter what at the end, but you know to avoid skipping all of the stages with that game theme, this lonely coin won't count for the quest. The aim of this video is to see how many levels can be beaten coinless. So, without further ado, let's just jump into it. The quest begins with a level called Ship Love, which starts off with a bunch of heart-shaped coins. Going down the pipe allows you to get a P-switch, which is supposed to be used to turn those blocks into coins, but we don't want to do that in here. Bringing the P-switch back with us allows us to turn the hearts into platforms and we have just enough time to reach the second part of the level. Sadly, to go on we have to enter that door and collect all of those ugly coins on the conveyor belt. Ugh. Using the cannonballs I tried to go above the wall to skip using that door but sadly it's not possible. At first I thought that was it, but then I talked to my buddy, I say, master of the difficult challenges, and believe it or not, he found a way to get to the end of the level. Basically, he keeps going back and forth and picks up the power block to remove the coins on the conveyor belt. Brilliant! He did it! He completed this level without a coin, wow, and he's currently trying other levels I couldn't complete so make sure to check him out, okay? New Arena Maker is the second level we'll play today and this one starts off with cannons behind you throwing out coins, so be sure to move out of the way ASAP. There's a lot of question blocks on the way but just avoid them and you'll soon reach the end part of the level, which requires you to jump down to grab the flagpole. Just avoid this line of coins and you'll be all good. Arena Maker Returns is up and this level takes place underwater. To be fair, your biggest threat here ain't going to be the coins, it's going to be the cheap cheeps, the bloopers and other underwater enemies. The only coins that will be in your way are located near the end, but you can just swim in between all of them to reach the flagpole. Yeah, this one's easy. Arena Maker is the third and final level made by this Arena guy and this one starts off with a big problem. After navigating your way through this narrow path, you'll get to this point where you're supposed to jump down to proceed, but there's a lot of coins on your way. I had the idea of using the bombs to try to dig a path on the other side, but I was really thinking way too hard. 
just go under this block at the beginning and you'll find a giant Koopa Troopa. So let's just use its shell to dig up a path under the coin arrows. Once you arrive on those green pipes, you wanna be extra careful because there's an invisible block containing a deadly coin. You can thankfully still make the jump without hitting it and the rest of the level is a piece of cake. Let's visit Triforce Heroes to see a lot of coins. Yeah, all of those Zelda Triforces will restrict your jumping options, but thankfully this won't be much of a problem as you can just walk under them all. To be fair, this is going to be the strategy you'll be using for pretty much the entire level. You'll have to wait patiently for enemies to pass you by so you can go under the coins, or you can be a crazy person like me and use those enemies to jump above the coins. Super Mario Con 25th Anniversary is such a weird stage. It just doesn't make any sense to me. There are blocks everywhere, and all sorts of blocks. To be completely honest, it's not a very good level, but thankfully it doesn't contain that many coins either, so we can actually beat it quite easily. Cat Peach's course is pretty much the perfect example of what not to do to create a good level. It is just an enemy spam level. It's disgusting and really annoying to play, even more so now that we have to avoid all of the coins. Thankfully, by grabbing the mushroom at the beginning and doing a couple of precise jumps, you can reach the end just fine. Cat Mario's course is very easy, and the only dangerous part is on the other side of this wall the babum blows off. Evil coins shooting cannons. Ugh. Thankfully, you can just bait them into shooting their coins to then go back and run super fast once the coins disappear and you'll make it through. Yoshi is awesome. It's a very fun level using Yoshi in all sorts of creative ways. The first part of the level is quite easy and it doesn't feature a single coin, so no worries. This part here is where things get a little bit spookier. You see, you normally have to use this P-switch to turn the blocks into coins, but thankfully, in Super Mario World, we can use a spin jump to break them. To go under those spikes, you'll need to turn into Small Mario, and doing so removes your ability to break the blocks, so you'll have to make sure to bring a mushroom in Yoshi's mouth if you want to make it past this section. But here's the next problem. This pipe over there is covered with ugly coins. I thought this was a dead end, but here's what you actually have to do. In this section, you'll have to bring both a mushroom and a peace switch with you. Thankfully, the mushroom can move on its own, making the task a little bit easier. Once you arrive back in this section, hit the peace switch to turn the evil coins into blocks, and then use a spin jump to break those, and you'll be out of here. Woo! Beating this level coinless required a lot of strategy. I liked it. PAX West 2015 Omegathon final round is up, and you'll have to jump above this first section over there because if you decide to go down, you'll be forced to hit a P-switch and turn those blocks into coins. Make sure to kill those enemies and enter the pipe as fast as you can because that evil Lakitu up there throws deadly coins at you. This next part doesn't contain that many coins, so you'll soon reach this battle against Bowser, which isn't very difficult to be real. Your final challenge will be on the other side of Bowser, with those pipes that shoot coins, but once again, make a run for it and you'll be all good. NES Remix is our next stop, and this one is literally just World 1-1 and World 1-2 from the original Super Mario Bros game, but remixed together. It is very easy to complete both those levels and reach the end without a coin. Mario and Luigi Paper Jam will force you to make very tricky jumps in order to dodge all of the evil coins. At first, everything is good, up until this last part. As you can see, this one contains gross coins on your way, preventing you from jumping up there. I eventually just jumped hoping to find an invisible block, and there's one right there that contains a 1-up and not a coin? What are the odds? Using that block you can jump above all of the coins there and make it to the end without touching a single coin. Mercedes-Benz Jump and Drive is the first auto-scroller level of this run, and it starts off with coins and munchers. The first coin can be dodged, but good luck with the second one. My buddy I say found a way to jump on the first letter there to go up the coins, but sadly, even using this strategy, the next part of the level contains so many coins that there is no way to dodge them all. This one is a no-no. 
Mario Hills is next and this level does feature a couple of coins that will force you to be super careful of where you jump, but nothing that stands in the way that much, so this one will be done quite fast. Let's play the Nintendo Badge Arcade level to quickly find out that this level wants us to use the P-Switch to turn those bricks into coins in order to finish the level. And sadly, there is no other way to make it pass, so yeah, this one is not possible. Belch Base is up, and this one features some really annoying and precise jumps. Especially this one there, where you have to use the Buzzy Beetle to jump up there and avoid the coins on the left. Make some very tiny hops to go up those platforms, and you'll soon reach the end of this stage. Welcome to Saturn Valley, a very cool looking level, which sadly is ruined by the underground section. You see, there are a lot of vines down there, and they all contain gross coins, and sadly, even when trying to use the homing bullet bills, I couldn't get to dodge all of the coins. This one's not possible. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is not a very difficult stage, although you have to damage boost on those spikes over there to avoid using the P-Switch and turning those blocks into deadly coins. The last part contains some evil coins shooting pipes once again, but if you run super fast, you can get past without collecting a single one, so we are good to go. NES Remix Super Mario Bros 2 is a remake of the very first level in Mario 2, and this one does contain one very tricky jump over there. There are donut platforms and coins right above them, which limits your options greatly. But thankfully, it is actually possible to get past them by running super fast and being a little bit lucky. Once that difficult part is done, the rest of the level is super straightforward and you'll reach the end in no time. NES Remix Excite Bike just requires you to hold down the right arrow on the D-pad and you'll reach the end. No coins, no challenge. Southwest Air Adventure is a level based off an airline. The first part is impossible. You have to land in between those coins to land down below, but this is way too precise for me to do. And even if we pretend I made it with a pixel perfect jump, this next part is filled to the brim with coins, so forget about it, this one's not happening. Koo Feet Yamamura is the next level and it does feature a couple of deadly coins here and there, but they can all be avoided by being super careful and taking your time. This last one is particularly scary because you have to jump from one moving block to another and there's no room for error. Adventure in Sarasalan is not very difficult. Most of the coins reside in the underwater section of the course, next to those bouncy donuts. Just be careful not to bounce on a coin and you'll soon reach the end of the level. Paranormal Research is up, and this one is super difficult, featuring tons of very precise jumps under or above deadly coins. You have to make sure to move the booze out of the way if you want to stand a chance. And this final part here is just insane. Precise jumps, moving booze and deadly coins, but believe it or not, it's actually possible to beat it. But to move on to the next part, you have to hit that invisible block there that gives out a deadly coin. So all of this insane difficult platforming was for nothing. Ugh, what a shame. Tokaigi 2016 Contest Course 1 is up, and this one doesn't have any coins during the first part. But sadly, going down that pipe spells trouble for this quest. You have to use the cannonballs to go up, and while the first jump can be done coinless, the following jumps are not that nice to us. And sadly, you absolutely need to go through that section in order to get the fire flower and reach the end of the level. So yeah, this one is not possible. Tokaigi 2016 Contest Course 2 doesn't contain that many coins, but the problem resides in the way you're meant to be the level. See, you're supposed to jump there to find invisible blocks to then use the P-Switch to make your way to the top, but as you can imagine, hitting invisible blocks gives us deadly coins. And even when you're over there, you're meant to use the P-Switch to turn those blocks into coins. The thing is, we can actually use the P-Switch to jump higher. If you drop the P-Switch while it's in the air and you hit it and then jump mid-air, you can reach high grounds. It is kinda complicated to pull off at first, but after a while you'll be able to reach the P-Door and complete the level. Tokaigi 2016 Contest Course number 3 is all happening underwater, and it's 
pretty original, but it does force you to turn those blocks into coins and those coins into blocks. So as you can imagine, this one is not possible for this quest. Tokaigi 2016 Contest Course 4 is next, and the level starts with you having to do a triple jump over this wall. But to do so, you have to collect a bazillion coins, and there's no way around. Next up is the level name I Choose You, and it's based off the classic Gen 1 Pokemon games. You first have to choose a starter Pokemon, and I went with my boy Squirtle, because that's the Pokemon I picked as a kid, but um, uh oh, I guess Squirtle wasn't that great of a choice in here. Anyway, let's try Bulbasaur then. The challenge for this Pokemon isn't very difficult at first, but in order to reach the end door, you have to hit those invisible blocks and collect those dirty coins, so this is not happening. Thankfully, Charmander has a challenge that features a couple of coins, but none that are in the way, so we can finally reach the end door. And then the rest of the level is pretty easy, so no worries, this one's actually possible thanks to Charmander. Next up is Nisekoi, Tsugumi and Marika, which has a lot of coins limiting your movement options at first, but just slide down the wall over there and you'll easily reach the second section of the level, which doesn't have that many many coins. It's actually a pretty easy level. Nisekoi, Chitoge and Kosaki is up and this one starts off with a very similar layout to the first level. But after entering that door, you'll reach the weirdest level so far. Basically, all you gotta do is to walk on those clouds up until you reach the end of the level. Yeah, very easy level. And also, those coins that I collect here do not count because I was attacked by them after I touched the flagpole, so they don't increase the coin counter, okay? Just wanted to make that clear. Barbara in Tomato Land is the next level, and what kind of name for a level is that supposed to be? Anyways, as you can see, this level wants us to go through this barrier of coins to go up those platforms. So you bet this one is not possible. Secrets of Statue Mario is a very cool level, and it does feature a couple of tricky coins you have to dodge. But sadly, to complete the level, you have to go once again through a wall of coins after hitting a P-Switch. So this one's impossible too. Am I the only one getting hungry? Because it's time for Mario's Lunch Break. A stage that has a couple of coins here and there at first, forcing you to be extra careful, especially when you're climbing those vines. But sadly, once again, to complete the level, you have to hit a P-switch that turns bricks into coins. Yup, another defeat. <sighs> Twilight Princess HD is next, and this level is kinda long and not that interesting. But it doesn't contain a whole lot of coins, so you'll complete it very easily. Toadette Treasure Tracker is the sequel to that Captain Toad level from before, but sadly, this one is not possible, as you have to collect those red coins to proceed, and they do count on our total coin counter. And sadly, even if I made up a rule excluding red coins from this run, to get the final red coin you have to go through a bridge full of deadly yellow coins. So yeah, sorry Toadette. Yu Ayazaki's Big Adventure is a level that starts off with a floor made out of bricks and a P-switch. So you know what that means, right? Yep, coins. But you know, I didn't want to give up and realize there was a POW block up there. So what if I managed to hit the P-switch to jump on the POW block to get rid of all of the coins? Well, you know what? After a lot of tries, I eventually managed to do exactly that, and turns out it works. We can actually get past this part of the level. What is less nice is the fact that in order to get past this second section, we need a key. And uh, yeah, that key is surrounded by dirty evil coins. Why do you do that to me, Nintendo? Starfy, Prince of Puffed Up is the next stage, and it starts off with those very tight fits in between blocks and coins, but that's all good and everything. Heck, even this section with the green pipe can be completed without a coin. Once underwater, there are going to be more coins to avoid, but you'll then reach this wall of bricks and this P-switch. <sighs> again? Come on dude, I hate the P-switch now. This one's impossible again. Metal Resistance is next, and once again, we have to collect red coins in order to make it to the second part of the level. And yes, once again, even if we decide not to count the red coins, we arrive at this part forcing us to ride the skull platform and collect tons of coins. 
Popo and Nana's climbing challenge starts off with a very tight jump in between coins and then you reach this next part, which requires you to hit invisible blocks to collect coins and proceed. Uh, you can go above the level in here, but it's worthless as you can see you just fall down in a pit, so another one that's impossible. Hello Kitty and my melody is next, and can this one save us from the losing streak we're on? Well, yes it can! This level does contain a couple of coins in your way, but if you're being careful and you're planning your jumps, you can actually manage to avoid them all and reach the end! <laughs> Finally a level we can beat! I was starting to get worried! Sean's Mussy Mole Mischief starts off with tons of those bouncing donuts and coins on top of them, and as you can see, there's not much room to dodge them. And anyways, the next part requires you to go through a wall of coins, so yeah, it's not happening. Squid Sisters vs Bloopers is a level featuring everyone's favorite Mary and Callie from Splatoon. I decided to play as my girl Callie and the level is not that difficult, thankfully. You do have a couple of coins to avoid throughout the level, but all of them can be avoided by being patient and careful. So yeah, this one's possible. Alright, time to walk the dog in Walking with Undo Dog, a level where you control a dog in his adventure to swim through the ocean, avoiding coins on his way, to then go up a pipe and find a bridge that is full of unavoidable coins. Yeah, it's a very sad story and it doesn't end up well for this quest. Dr. Kawashima's athletic training is very tricky at first, because if you want to get the mushroom you have to hit this question block, but there's an invisible block underneath it. You can thankfully get the mushroom with a very precise jump from the sides. You'll then have to make your way up those conveyor belts, and while being kinda tricky and difficult because of the coins, this section of the level can be completed. This next part wants us to use those donut platforms and a flying paratroopa to reach this block over there with a very tricky jump. And would you believe that after all of these efforts, we're forced to go through this narrow path filled with undodgeable coins, ruining all chances of completing this level coinless? I'm really starting to be sad now, especially considering the rest of the level can actually be done without a coin. Come on. Welcome to the final stage of the day, Nintendo World Championship 2017. And this level features so many coins, it's ridiculous. You have to collect red coins to enter the door to then touch even more coins in this castle section of the level. Yeah, this one is not possible. There we go, we have completed all 46 stages. And while the quest started quite well, the ending was full of undodgeable coins. I managed to complete 26 levels without touching a single coin, having 20 that I couldn't complete. And let's say we include Issei's epic victory in the very first level, that makes 27 levels that were possible. And sadly, that gives us only 59% of the even courses that were cleared without a coin. So yeah, we're not passing this exam, sadly. Well, there we go people, it's finally here. Super Mario Maker 2 is out today, and I'm actually glad you decided to take a break from playing the game to watch this very original video where we are going to be playing Super Mario Maker 1 for the Nintendo 3DS. You see, I figured that since we played all of the sample and event courses on the Wii U version of Mario Maker 1 without touching a coin, why shouldn't I play the 3DS version too? After all, it features this mode called the Super Mario Challenge that has a total of 100 levels, most of them being brand new. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all of the Super Mario Challenge levels one after another and we'll try to see how many can be completed without touching a single coin. That's it. That's all the rules, let's just jump into it. World 1-1 is literally the very first level of the very first Super Mario Bros game ever, so you know this one is super easy. 1-2 does feature a couple of coins and those Koopas underneath them, but you can just bounce on their shells to avoid collecting any coins. 1-3 has lots of enemies, which could potentially be a problem if it wasn't for the fire flower you get at the beginning of the level, making it a cakewalk. 1-4 is up, and this one doesn't contain a single coin, so you'll beat it easily. 
In World 2-1, you'll have to swim in between the Goombas and the many question blocks. Just be super careful not to hit a single one as they may contain deadly coins and then you'll be all okay. 2-2 is kind of tricky because you need to enter this pipe at the end to clear the stage, but the way to do that is to hit the Koopa Shell to break those blocks. But as the Koopa Shell bounce left and right, they'll hit coin blocks, giving you the deadly coins. So instead, we'll have to grab a super leaf to then use our raccoon tail attack to break the blocks ourselves. Once you got this figured out, this level is done. 2-3 is actually super easy because it's just a remake of World 1-2 from the original Super Mario Bros game and you can actually just break the blocks on top there to skip the entire level, so you know, it's pretty easy. 2-4 is actually a problem for this quest. You see, in order to enter that pipe, you need to hit that P switch, turning all of the blocks into coins. And sadly, there is no mushroom power-up that would allow us to break those. So yeah, this one is actually not possible. 3-1 actually has a couple of coins here and there, but none that can't be avoided with a couple of precise jumps. Just be wary of your surroundings and you'll clear this in no time. 3-2 is a really weird level featuring a couple of coins here and there, but this level has tons of space to dodge them all, so you have nothing to worry about. 3-3 is very easy and doesn't contain a single coin, so this one will be done in no time. 3-4 also does not contain a single coin, just some Lakitus throwing some fireballs. Piece of cake. 4-1 is a remake of the first level in Super Mario Bros. 3, and the only coins that could prove to be a problem can actually be cleared by flying over them or just going under them, so you know, it's pretty simple. 4-2 is a very difficult level because it contains so many coins. Usually, those coins are meant to show you where to fly in order to reach the end of the level, but having them in our way makes everything harder. Thankfully, if you've played a lot of Super Mario World, you probably mastered the art of cape flying. By alternating between pushing left and right, Mario can actually glide with the cape and fly in a perfect line without losing any altitude. This is actually what you'll need to do to clear this level without touching any of those coins over there. It's really precise, really spooky, but it can actually be done and the rest of the level is kind of easy. 4-3 wants you to do some really precise jumps using the propeller suit, and since there are tons of coins, it's actually harder than it looks, but all of those coins can be avoided, up until this part, where you have to go up that pipe. And yeah, with all of those coins guarding the entrance of the pipe, there's actually no way we're completing this one, sadly. 4-4 is a very gross level featuring so many coins, there's actually no way of getting past the very first jump without touching one of those, and I mean, the rest of the level wasn't really promising anyways, so you know, this one is not possible. 5-1 is next, and this one does contain its fair share of coins, but most of them are located above Mario most of the time, so just ignore them and you'll be all good. 5-2 features lots of trampolines and a bunch of coins too, so you'll have to be super careful not to bounce too high. Sadly, once I reached this part there, I just couldn't get over those coins on the conveyor belt. Bouncing on a trampoline doesn't bounce me high enough to dodge all of those boos, so yeah, sadly, this one looks impossible. 5-3 is also kind of annoying, as it contains a lot of coins that you cannot really dodge, and the second part of the level requires you to hit a P-switch, turning all of those blocks into coins. So yeah, forget about this one. 5-4 is a Noto scroller, and it features a lot of coins. You can imagine combining those two elements together just doesn't really fit with this coinless challenge. So yeah, sadly, this one is impossible. 6-1 is a very scary level. It features a lot of coins, forcing you to do some epic scary jumps. My tip here would be to ignore all of the trampolines and just crouch jump in between the hazards and the coins. But for the final part of the level, simply bounce on a trampoline and just press jump when ready to move on to the next one, 
all of this while controlling Mario to make sure not to hit a single coin up there. 6-2 is all about patience. If you bounce on the Goombas, you will hit some coins for sure, so just be patient and wait for them to move out of the way and you'll reach the end in no time. 6-3 is home of those bouncing donut platforms, and if you've played this game before, you know how annoying these platforms can be. You can barely control where you bounce, and couple that with coin dodging, and you've got the recipe for an impossible stage. Next! Welcome to World 6-4, and um, yeah, this one is not happening. 7-1 is thankfully a pretty easy level and doesn't contain a single coin in our way, so we'll reach the end in no time. 7-2 is basically a survival test. Just try to stay alive for long enough to reach the end and you'll be all good. There are not any coins that will be a problem in that one. 7-3 is a very easy level that doesn't contain a single coin, so just run to the end of the stage and you'll be done. 7-4 is also pretty simple, as the only coins in the level are located over there and you can simply just walk under them, so no worries. 8-1 does feature a lot of coins, but thankfully you can dodge all of them if you are paying attention to your surroundings and use the propeller suit when required. 8-2 is a very complicated stage. Basically, you have to jump on Bubsy Beetles to fly to the end of the stage, but there's no way we're actually dodging all of those coins over there. Thankfully, there's a secret pipe up there leading to a whole different area. This part is actually kinda tricky and contains a lot of coins. I managed to get past the first couple of coins, but there is no way for me to actually remain under all of those coins over there, as the Bubsy Beetles always fly up when you stand on them. It might be possible, but I just couldn't do it myself, despite trying it for a very long time. 8-3 might look familiar if you've watched my Mario Maker Wii U coinless video. Remember Coinucopia, that level featuring hundreds and hundreds of coins? Well, it's back in the 3S version, and once again, there is no way of clearing this one. 8-4 is up, and this one is not very difficult, as it doesn't contain that many coins. Whew, that's a relief. 8-5 does contain a couple of red coins, which do count on the coins counter, but thankfully, these are just for a bonus objective, so you can actually just ignore them all. Doing so actually makes the level possible without touching a single coin, 8-6 doesn't actually contain a single coin, so just bounce your way to the end of the level and you'll be done. 9-1 is a very easy airship level, as you can actually go above all of the dangerous hazards, and I don't even think there's a single coin in there, so yeah, this one's easy. 9-2 does contain a couple of coins here and there, but they can all be dodged by being extra careful. Be patient with those dry bones and the end will be just around the corner. 9-2 3 is sadly a level that contains coins everywhere. You're actually meant to do some very precise wall jumps and Nintendo decided to put coins everywhere to show you where you have to jump. So yeah, there is no way of dodging all of those coins. 9-4 is super simple and will be completed real quick. Just make sure not to enter the bonus area and you'll be all good. 9-5 is an auto-scroller level featuring tons of coins. Thankfully, all of them can actually be dodged by being careful in your jumps. Make sure to jump on top of this platform there after hitting the P-switch because you don't have enough time to walk past the blocks before they turn back into coins because of how slow the scrolling goes in here. Once that is done, you're good to go. 9-6 features a lot of cannons, and some of those will shoot out evil coins, so just be careful, wait for those evil coins to disappear and you'll be good. 9-7 doesn't contain that many coins, it does however contains a lot of enemies, so just make a run for it and you'll be okay. 9-8 takes place on a skull platform that goes really fast, along the way you'll meet many dangerous coins. The first part is quite easy, but once you reach this part, make sure not to hit that P-switch or else you're toasted. You actually have to dodge the P-switch to then move quickly on those blocks to catch up to the platform and then do some really precise jumps in between those two sets of coins while going up. 
because of the speed and momentum gained from the platform, it's actually insanely difficult not to touch any of those coins. But after a lot of tries, I managed to do it. So yeah, this one is possible, but very, very hard. World 10-1 is actually very easy, and after that last level, this is very welcomed. Just hop in the green shoe and make your way to the end of the stage, and that's it. 10-2 wants you to use ground pounds to defeat enemies, and that's all good up until this part there. You have to ground pound to defeat the Goombas and get the key, but ground pounding over there hits the question blocks and give you some evil coins. Sadly, this level is in the Mario 1 engine, so you can't just grab the power block and bring it with you. Yeah, this one's not possible. 10-3 is a remake of a Super Mario World level, and this one is super easy to complete. 10-4 only contains one set of coins and they are just flying at you, but just bounce using your Yoshi buddy and you'll have nothing to worry about. 11-1 is next, and this level looks impossible, as you have to hit a P-switch to turn those blocks into coins to get to the next part. But you can thankfully avoid the need to touch those coins by catching the spiny shell with Yoshi to then use it to break those blocks. And that's it! Once that part is done, what remains of the level is quite easy. 11-2 does contain a couple of coins, but it does feature multiple paths, so you can usually avoid all of the bad coins. Do a very precise jump on that Koopa over there to then damage boost your way to the end of the stage and you'll be done. 11-3 is really difficult. First off, it's an auto-scroller asking you to jump on moving platforms on rails. All of this while dodging a lot of boos and a crap ton of coins. This one requires a lot of practice, but eventually you'll nail it and dodge all of those evil coins and enemies. Once that is done, don't think it's over, because there's actually a lot more coins to dodge. This final part with the dry bone is insanely difficult, but all of this can be done by being a little bit lucky and having a little bit of skill. 11-4 gives you three pipes to choose from, and I suggest you go down the first one, as you'll be riding down a slow platform without any coins that stand in your path. Just make sure to exit the pipe as small Mario, or else you're kinda screwed. Thankfully, Nintendo kinda knew I was going to attempt this challenge, as they put a hammer bro to help me damage myself. Hey, thanks a lot, guys! For World 12-1, hop into a Koopa Clown car and fly very low under all of the enemies and coins and you'll be okay. 12-2 is another level with a Koopa Clown car and while this one is way trickier, just make sure to defeat most enemies in your way and you'll be able to dodge most of the evil coins. 12-3 features yet again a Koopa Clown car, except this one is actually not possible because of a simple jump over there. Yeah, there's no way of jumping in between those walls without touching one of those coins because of how big the clown cart hitbox is. What a shame. Can you believe World 12-4 is another clown car level? Well, believe it or not, it is, and once again, it features some impossible jumps, so this one is not possible. 13-1 wants you to get a propeller suit to then go up there, but as you can see, there are some evil coins in our way, so sadly, we cannot go past this one either. 12-2 just wants you to follow the P-switch up until you can hit it and destroy the enemies that block your path. This one's pretty easy, actually. 13-3 is a very easy level, and the only annoying coins are those flying ones over there, but if you move back and wait for them to pass you by, you'll then be all good to go. 13-4 doesn't feature a single coin, so it's an easy win. 13-5 features a lot of coins, but thankfully, it also features a POW block. Let's use it to get rid of the coins and we'll be able to make our way to the end easily. 13-6 features so many coins, dude. Yeah, forget about this one. 14-1 features so many coins, dude. Yeah, forget about this one. For World 14-2, just be super careful and make sure the Bubsy Beetles fall in a way that they don't hit any question blocks and you'll beat the stage easily. 14-3 takes place underwater, and it does feature a lot of coins in your way. 
that will force you to do some very precise swims in between all of the dangerous things. Clearing this will lead you to the final part, which forces you to run and collect so many coins. Yeah, this is disappointing to say the least. 14-4 only has coins in those invisible flying blocks, so you know, just avoid hitting any and you'll reach the end in no time. 15-1 is a very tricky level. You'll have to do some very precise Yoshi jumps to get to the end, and then there's this part which looks impossible. But here's what you gotta do, just grab a star in Yoshi's mouth and spit it out that way. Then, ditch Yoshi and as small Mario, make a very precise jump in between the coin and the ground there to then use the star to defeat all of the plants that stand in your way and ta-da, you did it. What remains of the level is quite easy and doesn't contain that many coins. 15-2 is super easy and the only coins that could be annoying are flying over there, but you have plenty of room to dodge them all. 15-3 is quite easy if you grab a cloud and just fly above all of the evil coins. 15-4 is a very tricky one featuring blocks on rails. Basically, you'll have to be careful when moving and jumping to dodge most of the coins. For this final part with all of the chain chumps and the coins, you'll have to spin jump on top of those enemies to avoid touching the coins underneath. As soon as you land back on the platform, Quickly move to the right as spin jumps break the platform, so yeah, don't waste any second there. 16-1 is, once again, a level featuring lots of those bouncy donut things that I hate with a passion. And once again, forget it, there is no way this level can be done coinless as those donut platforms are way too unpredictable. 16-2 requires you to do some insane precise jumps in between coins, enemies, platforms, and all of this while running super fast with a star? It took me a while to perfect it, but it is actually possible to make it to the end without collecting a single one of those evil coins. Man, this one was so stressful. 16-3 features so many lift platforms and coins everywhere. I don't think this one can actually be done, it's way too insane. 16-4 does contain its fair share of evil coins that stand in your path, but thankfully, there's always a way of dodging them by being creative. Bouncing on those saws at the end without being able to jump in fear of touching those coins up above was very annoying, but it is possible. 17-1 wants you to hit blocks, hoping to find the correct one to proceed to the next area and most of the wrong blocks contain evil coins, so your best bet here is to memorize which blocks to hit in order to reach the end. It's kind of a pain in the butt, but it's doable. 17-2 is one big puzzle level, forcing you to explore many rooms and collect tons of red coins. So yeah, this one is not happening for this quest. 17-3 is pretty easy and all of the coins can be dodged by being careful. The fact that you have a cloud also helps a lot. 17-4 contains a lot of coins, but you have to jump in order to collect them. So basically, just make sure never to jump and it will be cleared in no time. 17-5 is up, and this one starts off with you having to collect those coins to go underneath the ice wall. Yeah, it's not happening, you can't go above it either, so nah. 17-6 is also impossible, as it forces you to run on the conveyor belt and there's a million coins in your path. 17-7 is kind of easy and doesn't contain that many coins, just dodge the flying invisible blocks and you'll be okay. 17-8 starts off okay, but you'll soon reach this part where you have to collect those coins in order to move on to the next part of the stage. Ah, what a disappointment. 18-1 is very tricky. First off, you have to try to fit a Koopa Clown car in between the ceiling and the coin there, which is very tedious. But even when you manage to do it, you still have to defeat a million bloopers. Eventually, after many tries, I managed to get past the section. And thankfully, the second part of the level doesn't really feature a single coin. So yeah, this one's actually possible. 18-2 is a very easy one, as all you have to do is to avoid the wigglers and the coins and you'll be all good. 18-3 is next, and sadly for this one, you need to collect 5 red coins in order to open that door and complete the level. 
and since red coins count on our total coin counter, we cannot complete this one. 18-4 is a very easy level, which doesn't feature that many coins, so it will be beaten in no time. World 18-5 is super easy, as you can actually use Mario's feather cape to fly above the entire level. That's kind of cheating, but it works. 18-6 isn't going to be that easy, as it features those blue skull platforms and coins everywhere. Forget it, not happening. 18-7 takes place underwater, and it does contain a lot of coins, but you can actually just swim around them without too much difficulty. The final part with the angry swimming wigglers is kind of spooky, but it is actually possible. 18-8 is another puzzle level, but sadly you need to go down this path over there to get a POW block, and as you can see, with those coins in the way, this one is not happening. 19-1 is next, and it starts off with all of those annoying coins. I tried to run as fast as I could, but it's actually not possible to clear this jump without touching one of those coins. 19-2 features so many rails and hazards, the first part can be completed, but once you reach this next part, there is no way to dodge all of those coins, sadly. The platform is too slow, which doesn't allow you to dodge them, and that's a shame, really. 19-3 is a really stressful level featuring fire bars, coins, and all sorts of crazy hazards. The first part of the level can actually be done without touching a single coin, but once you reach this part, well, this is where the fun is over. I tried for hours to get past this part, but there are way too many coins in the way. It kind of looks possible, but I just didn't manage to do it myself. 19-4 requires you to use those boots to fly and dodge all of the coins. It is a very stressful level and the boots control are pretty weird, but eventually, after a lot of tries, I managed to complete the stage. 19-5 is... well, just look at it. Yeah, you can imagine this one is not happening anytime soon. 19-6 features a lot of coins but they are all on the rails above you, so basically just stay as far as you can from those rails and you'll be done in no time. 19-7 is insanely difficult, there are so many coins in this level, but the real challenge comes from those blocks on rail which are super annoying to deal with. Sometimes they push you off, sometimes they restrict your jumping abilities. It is super annoying to stand on those platforms really, but eventually I managed to reach the second part without a coin. And this second part is as tedious, especially this part here. But at one point I got extra lucky and managed to jump in between the coins and got to the end. Whew. 19-8 is a ghost house featuring tons of keys and locked doors. I think this one is supposed to be some sort of maze or something. Anyways, it doesn't feature any coins, so don't worry about it. 19-9 is really hard because it contains so many trampolines everywhere. This prevents you from going where you want to go. And this second part is even harder, with all of those trampoline walls super close to some coins. Oh, and don't get me started on that final part where you have to jump in between coins and trampolines. Yeah, that part was insanely difficult, but eventually I managed to do it. 19-10 is actually very easy, as most of the coins are out of your way, so if you're not going for them, you'll have no difficulty reaching the end. 19-11 does contain its fair share of coins, but you can thankfully dodge most of them by doing some precise jumps. Once you're underground, use Magikoopas to clear the path for you and you'll reach the end without a problem. 19-12 is the final level of the game, and this one wants you to do some very precise wall jumps, and as you can see there are tons of coins everywhere. So yeah, sadly this one is not possible for this quest. Well, there we go, we completed all of the levels in the Super Mario Challenge. But now it's time for the results. How many did we complete? Well, we actually managed to complete 68 stages out of the 100 in the game. So you know what? Today, we passed the Mario Maker 3DS exam. Hey what's up guys, it's Nico and today we're gonna be attempting a challenge that has been highly requested for quite a while. 
we're gonna be trying to beat Super Mario Maker 2 without touching a coin. The rules are simple. We are going to try to beat the story mode in Super Mario Maker 2 without touching a single coin. Now, obviously, the story mode revolves around the idea of you doing jobs and collecting coins to pay the toads to rebuild Peach's castle. So no, it's not actually possible to beat the game without a coin, duh. But we are still going to see which levels we can beat while dodging those yellow things. Heads up! Grabbing the flagpole at the end of a level grants you dirty coins, so we'll also have to ignore those because otherwise, well, the video would be over right away and this would be no fun. Now that everything has been set, let's begin. Job number one is a very typical Mario level. It does contain a couple of coins here and there, but you can thankfully dodge them all if you're being careful. Job two starts off with a very hard jump that you have to do. You have to hit the on off switches to make the red outlines into actual blocks, but then there are a lot of coins on your path. You can't actually crouch jump to fit underneath them, as it appears Mario is too tall. The thing is, you can actually avoid the first two coins with a very precise jump, and for those last two up there, go down one staircase and you'll eventually fit just right. Sadly, it is quite useless, as you need to go through these walls of coins at the end to complete the stage, so yeah. Job 3 is the first level in the brand new 3D World game theme, and it will feature a couple of difficult jumps. This level is meant to make you familiar with the new mechanics, such as the cat suit and climbing on trees, but you'll have to do things differently if you want to dodge all of those dirty coins. Thankfully, it's possible and not that difficult. Job 4 puts you on a rail platform in the middle of the desert and forces you to dodge the evil angry sun, and all of this while avoiding tons of coins, including some that are flying directly at you. Grab the propeller suit ASAP as it will be really useful later on. The most difficult part is over here, when all of the coins are falling down slowly at you on the parachute. You'll have to be a little bit lucky to dodge them all, but it is possible. Job 5 starts off with you having to rescue Yoshi from this room full of goombrats and coins, but it's not going to be a problem. Sadly, this next room wants you to hit a P-switch to go through dirty coins and make your way to the end, so this is not going to be possible for this quest. Job 6 will introduce you to a brand new mechanic that has been added in Super Mario Maker 2, clear conditions. Yep, you can now create levels that force you to do certain actions to be beaten. And well, the clear condition for this level is to collect 30 coins. Yeah, uh, next. Job 7 starts off with a claw and two deadly coins over there, so obviously it looks impossible right from the get-go. The thing is, it is actually possible to do a very precise jump in between the platform and the coins by staying as small Mario. More scary looking jumps await you on your path to victory, with each jump looking more difficult than the previous one, but it is indeed possible to beat this stage without a coin. Job 8 has many annoying coins on your way, but the level gives you countless Kuribo shoes, so you can actually use those to dodge all of the coins. Don't be afraid to jump out of a shoe to save yourself from death, or even worse, to save yourself from touching the dirty coin. Job 9 is an insanely difficult level. You see, you have to collect many keys to make your way to the end, and each of those keys reside inside of a room with a challenge to complete. Thankfully, you are given POW blocks, and those can make coins fall down and disappear. You're also given a P-switch that can turn evil coins into blocks, and you're also given a trampoline to jump higher. By using all of those tools, you can actually clear out all of the rooms in here. Some of those are pretty straightforward, but other rooms will require you to bring a POW block and a P-switch with you to get enough time to clear the room. You'll also need to combine a POW block with a trampoline to get rid of the coins hiding up there in that room. Eventually, you'll get a bunch of keys and reach the end without a coin. Job 10 is a pretty easy level featuring the cat suit and many fences you can climb on. The Benzai Bills are there to clear the path for you and help you dodge all of the evil coins, so you have nothing to worry about. Job 11 starts off with this impossible jump over there. I tried fitting in between those coins to land on the seesaw, but I just could not do it sadly. And it is a shame too, because the rest of the level can actually be completed without touching a single coin. Uh, oh well. 
Job 12 is an underground cave level that forces you to make a very difficult jump while the screen is flipped upside down. This is a really stressful jump, but that's the only difficult one, cause after that, the rest is a piece of cake. Job 13 features tons of evil coins, but thankfully you are inside of a dry bones shell, so you can float on lava. Move with the tide to dodge all of the evil coins and you'll be all good. Job 14 starts off with a very stressful jump. You have to use the twister to land on the platform up above, but this platform features three evil coins. And if you've played Mario Maker 2, you know that twisters are somewhat unpredictable. With a bit of practice, you'll eventually figure this jump out. Don't let your guard down though, as this level contains more evil twisters and more evil coins. Thankfully, this green pipe is an infinite source of POW blocks, and those blocks allow you to make evil coins fall down and disappear for good. Get ready to do lots of back and forth to get rid of any evil coins in your path, and you'll be good. Job 15 is a level where jumping is simply not allowed, because if you do so, well, you'll fail the clear condition. And, well, this level starts off with three coins, and you have to jump above them. So obviously, this one is not possible. Job 16 is a auto scrolling level inside of a Koopa Clown car. It does feature a couple of coins in your way, but thankfully, there's always enough room to dodge them all. Job 17 is a very easy level. It does contain coins in every one of those rooms, but they're always super easy to dodge. Job 18 forces you to climb on top of every single tree in this stage, and some of those trees give out deadly coins when climbed onto. Thankfully, as small Mario, you just have enough time to jump out of the way after grabbing a tree to dodge the evil coin. That is a neat discovery, but sadly, it's worthless, as the second part of this stage has way too many coins and it is just simply not possible to dodge them all. Job 19 features a lot of cheap cheeps and some evil coins on your way. The first part is quite difficult, but it is possible. I just can't say the same thing about this second part, as you have to swim super fast to dodge those evil green cheap cheeps that are coming after you. And sadly, there's just not enough time to focus and dodge all of those evil coins on the way. And with a twister right there, yeah, forget about that. Job 20 is a stressful level where you have to use your Koopa Clown car to break blocks and defeat enemies. Tons of coins are on the path, so you'll have to be very careful if you want to beat this one. Make sure to be small Mario if you want to fit in between the ceiling and those coins over there. Keep moving slowly and dodge all of the evil coins and you'll reach the end in no time. Job 21 is a very easy snake block level that does feature a couple of coins on your way, but thankfully it's quite easy to dodge them all. Job 22 is also quite the easy stage, as you can just wait for the water level to rise to be able to swim in between all of the deadly coins. Job 23 has tons of coins on the way up in the clouds, but thankfully there are so many vines on your path that it becomes quite easy to just climb around them. Job 24 forces you to collect red coins to open the locked doors, and those red coins increase the coin counter, so this one is not possible. Job 24 5 is not very difficult at first, having a couple of coins here and there, but nothing that you can't dodge. You'll eventually reach a part where you have to hit invisible blocks to make a path appear, and each of those blocks give out a deadly coin. What a shame. Job 26 is a low gravity stage, and at first everything is good, but sadly, you'll eventually get to this point here, and this jump can't be completed without grabbing one of those ugly coins. I even tried damage boosting myself to safety, but this won't happen. Job 27 forces you to kill 25 fish in order to finish the level. Grab Yoshi and your trusty feather cape and hold down the A button to fall down very slowly and eventually, after a couple of tries, you'll manage to dodge all of those evil coins and get the clear condition without a problem. Job 28 is a stage where you need to kick a shell to grab some red coins to unlock a door. So yeah, this one is not possible. Job 29 forces you to run from this evil rotten mushroom that keeps running after you in hope of poisoning you. 
This stage is very difficult, as lots of coins are on your path, and you kinda have to keep moving at all times to dodge that annoying shroom. And as annoying and difficult as this stage can be, it is actually possible to beat it without touching a coin, so that's pretty neat. Job 30 is a very easy level. You just have to time your jumps with the beat blocks and avoid a couple of coins here and there. Some of the coins in here look very difficult to dodge, but they actually are not. Job 31 is a very windy stage that will keep pushing you left and right. This is truly scary in this part where you stand on top of an elevator going down. Lots of coins on parachutes are going to be on your way, but thankfully they can all be avoided by being super careful. In fact, avoid anything that has a parachute in this stage and you'll soon reach the end. Job 32 takes place inside of an ancient temple, and entering the temple is actually the easy part, because once you're inside, you'll soon realize that you are forced to collect lots of coins to go down there. Yeah, this one is not possible. Job 33 looks possible at first, but sadly, once you reach those conveyor belts near the end, you'll be in big trouble. The first conveyor can be cleared without a coin, but I can't say the same thing about the other ones. Huh, what a shame. Job 34 is an insanely scary level where you keep bouncing on those donuts and you have to do this while dodging all of those evil coins on rails. Seriously, if you have played Mario Maker 2, you know what I'm talking about when I say that those bouncing donuts are just the worst. Controlling where Mario bounces is a pain in the butt, but thankfully this stage is actually possible without touching a single one of those evil coins. Job 35 is actually full of coins to dodge, and since it's a vertical level that features lots of trees, this one is not going to be easy. There's actually a way of dodging all of those evil coins by using spin jumps, wall jumps, and even by jumping on the bee enemy. But those last two coins up there just before the end pipe are just impossible to dodge. Job 36 is another stage that flips everything upside down, but the thing is, some evil coins appear appear when moving in between those two dimensions. You can dodge the first set of coins there, but you'll soon reach this part upside down where it's literally not possible to dodge any coins. Dang it! Job 37 forces you to tilt a seesaw on rail while dodging tons of evil coins. The first part is super difficult but actually quite possible. But as soon as you reach this next part, your luck will be over and there are way too many coins in this tiny space, so there's actually no way to dodge them all. Job 38 is really difficult as the screen moves so fast that you can barely see where the evil coins are. And there are lots of them too. This level will force you to memorize where those evil things are and just how to dodge them all, but eventually you'll realize that it is actually possible to dodge them all. It requires a lot of precision though. Job 39 will take place inside of a Koopa Clown cart, and at first everything seems right and possible. There are tons of coins, sure, but if you're being careful, you're good to go. Sadly, you'll soon reach this part with the cross-shaped bunch of coins. This will force you to abandon the cart, as its hitbox is way too big. And well, without a flying cart, well, this level is pretty much over. Job 40 forces you to dodge a ring made out of boo that's constantly moving. Some coins will fall from the sky, but if you outrun the circle of boos, you won't have any problem dodging them. Make sure to keep running right, because this cannon is full of deadly coins, so you'll want to make sure to be on top of it before it appears on screen and starts shooting those deadly things. There will be a very dangerous jump later in the level that will force you to run super fast and jump above 3 deadly coins. Job 41 is full of narrow spaces and does not contain a lot of coins, so this one is pretty easy. Job 42 is an underwater stage where you need to use the snake blocks to protect yourself from evil enemies, spikes, thwomps and so much more. There is a specific path you'll want to take in order to avoid all of the evil coins, but it is actually possible. Job 43 takes place in the dark, and it will force you to do some very precise jumps underneath coins above a pit. It's all good up until this point, where you need to hit the on-off switch from below, and sadly there are two coins awaiting down there that cannot be avoided. Dang it! 
Job 44 has a clear condition, and it is to collect 40 disgusting coins. Ew! Job 45 wants you to move up in order to avoid the evil rising lava. To do so, you'll need to hop on the skull platforms that move on the rails. And, well, yeah, this is embarrassing. This coin is ruining everything. Job 46 starts off with, well, coins that you can't dodge. Okay, next! Job 47 takes place underwater, but it contains a bunch of lava bubbles on rails. There's also a lot of coins scattered everywhere, but there's always a way to swim around those without touching a single one, so no worries. Job 48 is a stage that gives you a very limited amount of time to defeat all six dry bones. Of course, the level is full of mean coins, but it is actually possible to kill all of the enemies without touching a single one. Job 49 is a super easy level. It does contain a couple of coins, sure, but none of those are actually on your way, so you'll reach the end without a problem. Job 50 has a lot of rotten mushrooms running after you. It does contain its fair share of coins, but if you remain small Mario at all times, you'll be able to fit in between all of those. I'm not gonna lie though, this level is very scary. Job 51 has a clear condition, and yes, it is to collect evil coins. No thank you. Job 52 is a level with a fast lift platform taking place in the dark, and it's full of evil coins. Sadly, as you can guess, this level is simply not possible. But because of this one part here, where there are way too many coins next to another, and you can't simply dodge them all. Job 53 is a very scary vertical auto-scroller where you have to wall jump over and over again in order to avoid falling down in the evil poison water down below. And now, you also have to dodge evil coins as well, so you bet this one is really difficult. I'm going to be honest with you, I couldn't do this level without a coin on one go. However, I cleared each part of the level separately without touching a coin, so it is theoretically possible to beat it, I just couldn't do it myself. Job 54 is taking place in the clouds, and it does contain evil coins here and there. The first part is kinda easy to beat if you take your time, but the second part is a vertical auto-scroller, so you'll absolutely need to memorize where all of the coins are gonna be, because usually you just go up and boom, there was a coin there, you couldn't see it. That's really annoying. It takes a lot of practice, but it is actually possible to do it. Job 55 asks you to reach the goal inside of a Koopa Troopa car, and as you'll soon realize, if you want to keep your car, you'll have to touch some coins, and lots of them too, so this one is simply not possible. Job 56 has a clear condition, and it is to collect 80 coins. Ugh, let's skip it. Job 57 also has a clear condition, and you must collect 100 coins for this one? Ugh, we also have to skip it. Job 58 makes you go up the level using the evil twisters, and they usually always have tons of coins above them, so yeah, this one won't be possible. Job 59 is not a very difficult level if you take your time, there is only one very tricky jump on cannonballs in between some evil coins, but once that jump is done, it becomes super easy. Job 60 is a low gravity level where you must go in between evil plants, coins and much more. It is sadly not possible to avoid collecting some coins to go up that platform, so this one is also not possible. Job 61 is a super easy level, where you have to stand on top of donut platforms to fall down to the end. There are some coins here and there, but the stage has multiple paths you can choose, so avoiding the coins is quite easy. Job 62 has lots of bouncing mushrooms everywhere. My tip here is to avoid holding down the A button to make sure never to bounce high enough to collect the dirty coins. Thankfully, this stage is short and will be done in no time. Job 63 is a very easy level, and since you spend most of the stage inside of a flying Koopa cart, dodging the evil coins is not very difficult. 
Job 64 features a ton of fast blue snake blocks, remain small Mario, and do some scary looking crouch jumps and short hops to clear the first part. But sadly, there is this next part where dodging all of the coins is simply impossible, and you can't really go anywhere else to dodge them, so because of that one part, well, this level is not possible. Job 65 forces you to hit this POW block in order to break the blocks on your path and well, hitting that POW block will automatically collect all of the coins around it. Ugh, what a shame. Job 66 is full of Bubsy Beetles and tons of coins everywhere. You'll have to jump on them to make them go down and control their movements in order to dodge all of the pesky coins. It's a very short level, thankfully, so it is possible to actually beat it. Job 67 does contain a lot of evil coins, but most of them can be dodged by being super careful. Sadly, there's this part where you must climb on this vine and it is just not possible to move on the opposite side of the vine without touching a coin. Ugh, this is so sad. Job 68 is just impossible right from the get-go, as you have to run super fast on those tiny platforms, and as you can see, well, they're all full of deadly coins. Job 69 is... well... yeah, huh. Job 70 wants you to run super fast while dodging all of the icicles, and with all of the dirty coins on your path, this one is not gonna happen. Job 71 is another one of those screen puzzle levels, and while the first screen is actually possible, the second one contains so many coins that jumping in between them is just simply not possible. Job 72 gives you a Goomba shoe to be able to walk on the munchers and evil thwomps, and thanks to that epic gamer shoe, this level will actually be possible damage boost through this final part and there we go, we finally broke our losing streak. <sighs> Job 73 is an auto scroller and since it's so slow, you have plenty of time to see where the coins are and where they will fall down from, so this one is not very difficult. Job 74 forces you to defeat bloopers, and trust me, you'll want to do this very quickly, because if they get high enough and you bounce on them, you'll touch those deadly coins up there. Job 75 contains a lot of coins, but it also contains lots of POW blocks, so you'll definitely want to hit them to make those evil coins fall down and disappear from your way. It's a very easy level actually. Job 76 has a clear condition, and yes, it forces you to collect 50 deadly coins. Yup, another one of those. Job 77 is a level where you need to hold onto that heavy block to clear puzzles and collect keys, but thankfully, none of those puzzle rooms actually contain any coins on your path, so it's an easy win. Job 78 features a super scary jump during the first part, and after that, you'll need to make a path for the big mushroom to follow you. Sadly, this next part forces you to go up there, and there are two deadly coins that simply cannot be avoided, no matter what. Sadly, because of that, we can't beat this stage coinless. Job 79 forces you to defeat those skipsqueak enemies in order to collect keys and get to the next part. The first enemy is quite easy to defeat, but you'll soon reach this next one, where you are supposed to go inside of a clear pipe to defeat it. So yeah, sadly, this one won't, won't work. Job 80 is super annoying and contains a lot of flying coins. It's a very difficult stage, but it is actually possible to dodge them all by being careful. And, well, by being super lucky. Job 81 is another one of those stages where you just can't leave the floor or else you can't beat the level. And, well, yeah, you have to jump over those two coins right at the beginning, so this one is impossible. Job 82 is a very difficult level where you must go in between lots of coins and saws while holding onto moving vines. This level is insanely difficult and you'll definitely want to have a mushroom in order to damage boost your way to safety there. It took me lots and lots of tries, but this one is actually possible. Job 83 puts you inside of a Koopa Clown cart and wants you to defeat evil enemies and dodge coins. And all of this with a screen that moves super fast. So yeah, this level will not happen for this quest, I'm sorry. 
Job 84 is a level where you have to collect three red coins to open the locked door. And remember, red coins do increase the total coin counter. Oopsie doopsie. Job 85 has a clear condition that restricts you from jumping. And at first, it's not that bad actually, as you don't have a single coin on your path. But soon, you'll reach this part where you must quickly run under those twumps. And the first one lands on those question mark blocks and you automatically get awarded two coins. That ain't cool, Thwumpy. Job 86 will force you to cycle in between winter and summertime, but most of the coins that are in your way in one season are simply gone in the other, so you can just alternate between the two seasons to dodge all of the pesky coins. Nice. Job 87 is full of boxes, and sadly, a lot of those actually contain evil coins and you must break them in order to move through the stage. This will force you to collect some coins. And anyways, the end of the level simply can't be completed without touching one of those ugly, disgusting yellow things. Job 88 is filled to the brim with ice blocks and tons of coins that you must dodge. The second part here will be a big problem, as even if the thwomp clear out the ice blocks for you, you'll be forced to touch some deadly coins to clear that part. <sighs> Luck has just left us. Job 89 starts off with a very dangerous jump in between coins that is actually possible, believe it or not. But eventually, after doing a couple of things in the level, you'll be forced to go through these two evil coins after hitting the P switch. What a disappointment. Job 90 will give you a superstar and will ask you to run really fast to the end of these narrow paths. And sadly, you'll soon reach this part where you have to end up on the conveyor belt up there. And this won't be possible without touching those coins. So, there we go. We have completed all of the original 90 missions in Super Mario Maker 2. But how many did we complete without touching a single coin? Well... Only 44 were actually possible for this quest, so that's less than half the level that can actually be completed without touching one of those deadly yellow things. This is truly a disappointment. The thing is, Mario Maker 2 also contains special stages given by the many different characters, such as Toads, Undo Dog, this Eraser Dude, the Dancing Frog, and a couple more. If this video gets 5,000 likes, we'll see which one of those can be beaten without a single coin. Smash that like button, my dudes, if you want a sequel. A couple of weeks ago, we attempted to beat all of the 90 story mode stages in Super Mario Maker 2 without touching a single coin. How many did we beat? Well, you'll have to check the video out to know it. But at the end of that video, I mentioned that Mario Maker 2 also had special story mode stages, all given out by different characters such as Undo Dog, Yamamura, Soundfrog, and a couple more. Well, today, we are going to be playing those 30 special stages to see how many we can beat without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. We are going to be playing all of the special stages in the story mode one after another and we are going to avoid touching a single coin when possible. You see this lovely coin counter at the top? We'll try to keep it at zero at all times. Grabbing the flagpole when finishing a stage in Mario Maker 2 grants us dirty coins, but we'll ignore those ones for the challenge. Just like in the original video, using the Luigi assist blocks will be considered cheating and will not be allowed. Now that everything has been set, let's see how many levels can be completed without a coin. Here we go. Undo Dog has three jobs for us, so let's see what we can do with those. Job number one has a clear condition that restricts us from using the claws in the level. And to be fair, I'm okay with this, as there are tons of coins up there where those claws are. You'll soon reach a problematic part over here. You're supposed to move up on those ice blocks, but there are four coins waiting to be collected on top of them. And sadly, we cannot simply land in between those coins as Mario's hitbox is way too big. Plus, the blocks are made out of ice, so you'll always be sliding a little bit left or right, forcing you to collect a coin. 
This one is not possible. Job number two forces us to hop aboard a dry bones shell and move up and down with the poison water to go through some narrow passages. As you'll soon see, there are tons of coins meant to show you the way. The problem is, the way is now blocked by those ugly coins. I tried fitting in between all of those bad coins, but there's literally nothing you can do in here. Sorry guys. Job number 3 has a clear condition that prevents us from jumping, and right at the start, you'll see this. And even if we decided to jump and see how far we could make it coinless, we'll soon reach this pipe that we can't go into without touching those ugly coins. Ugh, what a shame. I'm sorry, doggy, but I couldn't do a single one of your job coinless. Let's go see Mr. Eraser and hopefully we'll do a better job with him. Job number one gives you a shell helmet, or a shellmet, and wants you to use those to destroy the flying lava bubbles in this room. It's not that difficult to do so, but you'll still have to be a little bit careful, because there's a big flying 10 coins amongst the lava bubbles, so make sure to avoid touching it. Make this very precise jump near the end above the 4 deadly coins, and this level will be done. Job number 2 wants you to use the many thwomps to kill some spinies and clear the condition. Sadly, to make those thwomps move left and right, you'll have to go down in their faces. And to do so, well, you have to go through one of those 2 coin barrier. Ugh. I tried moving as close as I could to them, but none of the thwomps move until you actually get down there. So, yeah, this level is not possible. Job number 3 is titled Target a Single Pom Pom. And yeah, it describes this level perfectly. All you have to do here is to enter this box and defeat the Mad Ladit. The fight is pretty easy and doesn't contain a single coin. Once Pom Pom is defeated, make sure to walk peacefully under this big 30 coin thingy and this will be done. Let's go meet Partrick the Brick and try to beat his jobs coinless. Job number one is full of exclamation point blocks and you'll need to hit them to create paths to go up. Don't hit those question mark blocks though, as they do contain the dirty coin. There's going to be a couple of coins on your path, so you'll always have to be careful moving up. This part here does contain multiple coins, and at first it kinda looks impossible, but it turns out you can actually slide on the wall over there to dodge those three pesky coins. You'll also want to be small Mario for this wall jump section there, if you really want to make it out alive and coinless. But besides that, well, this level is pretty easy. Job number two takes place in the dark in some narrow hallways, and it is full of evil coins as well. The problem with this stage is that you have to go down that path at the beginning, and as you fall down, you'll be forced to collect tons of evil coins. And that's not really cool. Job number three starts off with a pretty scary jump you have to make to enter that pipe. It's scary, yeah, but it is also possible, so we're good. There are going to be a couple more coins on your path, but most of them are easy to avoid. Make sure to avoid this le epic troll thwomp that comes out of nowhere. Once you ride it to the top, you'll reach... Uh, well, the end for this level. Why would you put coins there, Nintendo? That's not cool, my dudes. So, it wasn't that bad for Partrick, but hopefully we can help out Soundfrog even better and beat all of his jobs coinless. Job number one is an underwater stage taking place at night, in the dark, and is full of cheap cheeps. <sighs> Are you serious? Normally, you'd want to hit those question mark blocks to light up the path, but we have to avoid collecting coins, so we'll not be able to use those light blocks. You'll want to be extra careful when navigating those dark waters, as they're full of evil coins on the way. While going down the slope over there, make sure to swim above the coins, cause apparently you touch them if you just walk down for some reason. Once that difficult part is over, grab the flagpole and you'll be good. Job number 2 forces you to stay in the water at all times, so touching the ground is out of the question. There are going to be a couple of coins and big coins on the way, but thankfully, with the water level moving up and down, there's always a way for you to avoid touching those pesky coins. Job number 3 is not so bad at first, allowing you to swim in between the coins. Sadly, you'll eventually reach this part where you need to hit an on-off switch and it is surrounded by coins. After that, you'll need to go up this path that is filled with more coins. Ugh, what a shame. Well, thank you for the job, Soundfrog. Sorry about that last job I couldn't do coinless though. What? Wanna thank me anyways? How? By dancing? Uh, okay, well, thank you I guess. 
Yamamura the bird is next, and job number one gives us a feather cape and wants us to slowly glide down while avoiding all of the obstacles on the way. And with coins that we need to avoid as well now, this is gonna be quite difficult. Oh, and did I mention that there's a clear condition that prevents you from touching the ground? No? Forget about that part? Yeah, well it's kind of important as this part here is impossible without either touching some coins or touching the floor. So, you know, we can't actually beat this stage coinless. Job number two has a clear condition and it forces us to collect 50 coins to beat the stage. Yup, not gonna happen. Job number 3 is actually kind of easy to beat coinless. You have to jump from one cannonball to the next and there are only 3 deadly coins that you'll have to avoid. So make sure to bounce under the first one, above this second one and under the final one and this level will be complete. Red Toad has one job for us and in this one we need to carry a block to the end. This block is heavy and it also restricts your movements. So running and jumping becomes quite the task. You can thankfully drop it and pick it back up anytime you want, helping you dodge the evil coins. This part with the twisters is really annoying. If you mess up, the twister will push the block near some coins up above and there will be no way for you to grab it back up without touching them. You'll want the twister to blow the block all the way to the right over there and then do an epic crouch jump to land on the other side. The ending contains two evil coins and at first this looks like the end for this quest but if you remain small Mario for the entire stage you can actually manage to put the block over there and then do this very precise jump to land under the coins and bring the block back to the end. Woohoo! We did it! Green Toad also has a job for us and it forces us to hop aboard this cloud and go in between tons of spikes and saws. But as you can see, getting on the cloud without touching a coin is not a thing that can actually be done. Yeah, sorry Green Toad. Blue Toad sends you off to rescue the poor lost Purple Toad and saving him will be quite the problem because of those three evil coins over there. You'll have to do a super precise jump to reach Toad without touching the last coin on the left side, but it is actually possible to do it. Once Toad is with you, there are still going to be a couple more coins on the way, but none that will be problems if you're being extra careful. It was a super fun rescue mission, and now that Purple Toad has been saved, well, he has a couple of jobs for us. Job number one forces you to go up that pipe to go and defeat Spinies, and although it is possible to make your way up there by making a precise jump, you'll have to go back down that pipe to touch the flagpole once the clear condition is fulfilled, and well, you're gonna touch those coins on the way back there. So, bummer. Job number two asks you to bounce on this piranha creeper plant to defeat it and reach the flagpole. And you'll absolutely want to do some short hops, or else you'll touch those evil coins up above. Keep jumping on the enemy and avoid this big coin and you'll be good. Job number three gives you a spiny helmet and wants you to break blocks and defeat enemies to get to the end. But of course, there had to be this one part where Nintendo puts unavoidable coins on the way. I'm really starting to think that Nintendo knows about my shenanigans and are trying to cancel me. It's probably because of my Mario's Not a Hero video, right? Yeah, that has to be it. If we want more jobs, we can now go see Yellow Toad. Job number one features some very scary jumps that you have to make in order to avoid picking up deadly coins. You also have to do those jumps a second time with Yoshi and then a third time once you swallow the block. While this is all possible to do, the final part with those three coins on the bridge up there are simply impossible to dodge. We are forced to touch at least one of those and that's not really cool. Job number two wants you to carry a block once again and Mario is too tall to carry the block without touching those coins so you'll want to turn into small Mario for this part. Sadly, if you want to make it past this path, you'll need to enter the clear pipe while holding down the block as you can't just simply throw it inside of it, it just doesn't work that way. This will force you to collect some deadly coins when exiting the clear pipe and that's pretty lame. Speaking of lame things, well job number 3 is kinda lame as this part forces you to drop the block on the bouncing note thing and this forces you to collect some deadly coins in the process. Oh, and the ending is also forcing you to hit some invisible blocks that give out some coins. 
so that level is kind of garbage. Now that we have completed tons of jobs for the little friendly toads, let's help out the brain behind the entire operation, the Taskmaster. Job number one is a low gravity stage, and this really helps out as there are going to be tons of evil flying coins, but it is always possible to dodge them all by being super careful. By spamming the spin jumps, you can actually skip most of the stage by hiding out of the screen up above, so this level is pretty easy. Job number two asks you to rescue five poor little toads, and you'll have to do that while navigating some very narrow hallways. Sadly, most of them contain tons of unavoidable coins, so this one will not be possible. Job number three starts off okay, as there isn't a lot of coins to dodge, and when there are, well, there's usually something you can bounce on to avoid touching them. You can actually make it to this first pipe without touching a single deadly coin, but once you're on the other side of it, you'll reach this next part with the car that is filled to the brim with evil coins. And with the lava that is rising super fast, you don't really have time to stop and think about avoiding coins, so this level is impossible. The princess is going to give us our last three jobs, and hopefully these ones will be done coinless. Job number one starts off with unavoidable coins right at the beginning. <laughs> Seriously, Peach? I rescue you a million times and this is how you repay me? Job number two wants you to save 10 toads, but this will be easier said than done, as this stage is filled with evil coins that you have to dodge. Most of the coins are not very difficult to avoid, but the fact that you have to bring toads with you makes it difficult, because if they get hit by an enemy, they turn into bubbles and move back to the beginning of the stage. This plant inside of the cloud over there is what ruins my day. It keeps killing toads over and over again. But thankfully, with a very epic short hop, you can actually avoid it and once that is done, bringing the toads to the end will be quite easy. Job number three is Peach's recreation of World 1-1. Wow, how original. Sadly for us, this remake is impossible to beat without touching some coins because of this part here where you need to run super fast and bounce from one enemy to the next. Oh, and if you think she didn't plan you to take the secret path to avoid those coins, well, no, she thought about it. She's got a big brain. So, is it possible to beat the special levels from the story mode without touching a single coin? Nope, not at all. In fact, out of the 30 special stages, only 11 can be completed coinless, which is probably the worst performance in the Without a Coin series history. A lot of you guys were wondering if we could clear more levels by using Luigi's parts, and to be fair, this is actually a good question, I didn't think about it at first. So if this video gets 5000 likes, we'll go back to all of the failed stages in Mario Maker 2 and try to beat a couple more using Luigi's help. Half a year ago, I attempted to beat Super Mario Maker 2 Story Mode without touching a single coin. If you haven't checked out this video yet, you should watch it first, because I am about to reveal how many levels we were able to beat back then. Okay, last chance to click the card, okay, because I'm about to say it! I'm about to say it! Last time, we cleared 44 levels without a coin out of all of the 90. This means we have 46 that we haven't beaten. Well, today, we're going to attempt to beat those 46 remaining stages. How, you might be asking yourself? Well, when you die a couple of times in Super Mario Maker 2, Luigi appears and gives you a life lesson. When things get hard, you can either give up, try again, or call Luigi. And this is what we're gonna be doing this time around. The rules are simple. We are going to take all of the jobs we couldn't beat previously and we're going to revisit them, but this time we'll be using Luigi's help. When Luigi's mode is activated, you can push the minus button to add assist parts. Those include spar ups as well as blocks. Everything is allowed, as long as it helps us beat some of those levels without a coin. You see this lovely coin counter up there? Well, we need to keep it at zero or else we fail. Can we improve our record using Luigi's help? 
Time to find out. So let's just jump into it. Job 2 was our very first problem during the main quest. Because although we managed to squeeze our way up this staircase without touching a coin, once we got to this part, we are meant to use this Koopa shell to make our way across the on off walls over there. And there's tons of coins on the way, and this block that the shell needs to hit also gives out dirty coins. Thankfully, we can just create a staircase with blocks to go above this troublesome section. Job 5 takes place in this ghost house that is requesting us to hit these P switches to quickly make our way up the tower and into the pipe, but the blocks we hit are turning into deadly coins. Thankfully, we can now beat this stage by ordering a feather cape from Luigi's helpful store. Once we have this feather cape equipped, we can now just spin the blocks and make our way to the top. Some of those jumps are gonna be quite complicated to pull off, as you'll need to be crouching to get through, but it is possible. Job number 6 was not possible because it introduced clear conditions to us, meaning we absolutely have to get 30 coins in order for the ending to even appear. Obviously, even with Luigi's help, there's not much we can do here. Job 11 started off with this, and we could immediately tell this wasn't possible. I remember mentioning it was a shame because the rest of the level was actually possible without a coin, which still holds true to this day. Use Luigi and place a couple of blocks to make your way above those coins at the start and you'll be all good to go. Job 15 is another level with a clear condition, this time asking us to reach the goal without jumping. There are coins right at the beginning, so there's not much we can do. However, Luigi can give us a POW block, and using this block, we can make every coins on screen fall down and disappear after a brief moment. Using that strategy, all of the evil coins can be moved out of the way. Once that part is done, just play the level like you normally would up until the very end with the boo and the cannon. Tiptoe left and right to make your way to the flagpole without touching those dirty coins and you'll be all good. Job 18 asked us to do handstand on all of the trees to make our way to the end. And while I managed to find a way to dodge the pesky coins given once you do the handstand, I couldn't get past this section over there because of all of the coins that were on our way. Thankfully. We don't need to cat dive through coins anymore, as we can just place some blocks and create a bridge to make our way up there. Nice. Job 19 takes place underwater. And while the first part was pretty easy, once we got to this part, there wasn't much we could do. We have coins in the path, evil twisters, and a wall of green cheap cheeps closing on us. Ugh. Use one of Luigi's spar up to damage boost through the wall of cheap cheats and then use a pow block to get rid of the coins on the way. Sadly, you'll be needing another pow block to clear the next parts, and we only have one in Luigi's inventory. Thankfully, after we touch the checkpoint flag, we can simply lose a life on purpose by touching those spiky dudes, and then our Luigi inventory will be completely replenished. Nice! Once you get to this part, you'll be needing a POW block to get rid of those coins, and yet another one to go up this pipe. Hmm, this is not really possible. I did manage to create a safe box and hold the POW block in my hands to swim in between all of those coins. It was really stressful, but it worked. Get rid of those coins at the end to go up the pipe and this level will be done. Job 25 was pretty easy, up until we got to that room. The problem here was that you had to hit invisible blocks to create a bridge and make your way to the top. Every single invisible block was giving out a dirty coin. Well, now we don't need those invisible blocks anymore cause we got some Luigi blocks. Create your very own Luigi bridge and make your way across coinless. This next section is filled with bouncing node blocks, and some of those contain evil coins, so I suggest just making more bridges across the room to play it safe. Job 26 asked us to do tons of moon jumps to make our way to the end, and while the first parts were pretty easy to beat, we soon reached this part where we are meant to bounce on the Koopa and make our way across those spikes. But with the coins up there, there wasn't much we could do. Use Luigi's block to clear this one section, 
and then the rest of the level can be done Luigi-less. Yep, you heard that right. Luigi-less. That's a new word I just made up. Job 28 is a level where you need to go through five different puzzles, collecting red coins to open up the locked door. And as I mentioned in my previous videos, red coins do increase our total coin counter. Sadly, this one is not gonna be possible. Job 33 was pretty fun. It is a speedrun level where you are meant to quickly make your way to the end by running super fast and hitting the on-off switches on the way. Those three coins are super difficult to avoid and make you lose tons of time, but the real issue comes from this part where you're meant to run on the conveyor belts and jump off to hit the on-off switch. Obviously, we now have to put some Luigi blocks to allow us to do that coinless. And while this is not that difficult, reaching the end with enough time on the clock was the real problem. It took me a couple of tries to get the perfect run. Sometimes I was super close, other times not so much, but I eventually reached the end with zero seconds to spare. Whew. That was a close one. The problem we had with job 35 was not doing the handstands to get the clear condition. Nope, it was actually making our way to the top after doing them. Most of the clouds that we need to move to are full of evil coins. And although we can get quite high using enemies to bounce, there was not much we could do near the end over there. Thankfully, a couple of blocks will be all that is needed to beat it this time around. Job 36 required us to move through those pipes to visit an upside down version of the world and then make our way to the end, but there were too many coins on the path that we couldn't avoid. Now that we got Luigi, we can just place blocks and make our way to the very end like a true epic gamer. Job 37 takes place on this seesaw on rails, and it does contain a couple of coins on the way, but they can all be avoided for this first part. Sadly, after going down that pipe, this second section will contain a spike tunnel and a few coins. There's not much we can do to dodge those, sadly. Luigi's blocks will come in handy to make our way under this tunnel, um, um, above this tunnel. The rest of the level is pretty easy, so do not worry about it. Job 39 gives us a Koopa Clown cart and lots of enemies to shoot down, and this was all fine and dandy up until this one part where there is no way to fit without touching a single coin. Don't try abandoning the card behind, as even if you make it through the coins, you won't make it super far cause there's a pit down below. Use a pow block instead to get rid of the troublesome coins and then slowly glide your way to the end of the stage. Job 43 takes place in the dark and I remember doing lots of precise jumps under the coins up until I reached this part where we need to hit an on-off switch but there's tons of coins underneath. As it turns out, even without Luigi, we can just jump and hit one of those pow blocks to clear out the coins. <laughs> nice! Oh, by the way, the ending of this stage didn't look very promising either, with tons of coins and not a lot of ways to dodge them. Use Luigi to place blocks and you'll be okay. Job 44 is home of a clear condition that wants us to collect 40 gross, yellow, yucky, disgusting coins. This one is not possible. Job 45 was impossible right from the start, wanting us to jump on this cold coaster, but since there was a lonely coin on top of it, we couldn't do anything. Thankfully, we now have Luigi's blocks to help us get to the top. There are gonna be more evil coins on the way, but no worries, we'll make it to the end coinless. Job 46 was a problem right from the start, because of those pesky coins on the way. Thankfully, a good old Luigi pow block is all that is needed to clear them, but we'll need to place even more blocks on our way to get to the end. Oh, and we're gonna need another one of those pow blocks for the last part, so make sure to get crushed by one of those thwumpy after hitting the checkpoint to replenish your inventory. This level actually requires Luigi's help quite a lot. Oh hey, job 51 wants us to collect 50 coins, that is yucky, no thanks. Job 52 was a really annoying level taking place in the dark on a very fast moving platform on rails. You can barely see the coins before they pop out on the screen and you'll probably end up touching them all the time. Thankfully, another thing that Luigi provides us is a free flashlight. Yeah, every time you switch to the Luigi building mode, you can actually see the entire map and that helps out a lot for this level. This part here has so many coins that there is no way to beat it without placing a couple of blocks. Keep using Luigi's help and you'll reach the end. 
Job 55 usually requires you to hop in that Koopa car and make your way to the end. This is totally impossible because of all of the coins on the way, but I did manage to get to the end by using Luigi's help by placing blocks, using PAL blocks and such, only to realize that the car was a clear condition. Oof. No car, no victory. Well, this one is impossible. Speaking of, Job56 wants us to collect 80 coins to beat it. Not gonna happen today. Introducing Job57, yet another level that wants us to collect evil coins to beat it. A hundred of those to be exact. Ugh, it's not possible either. Job58 contains a lot of twisters and there's usually lots of coins above them. This is a big problem for this quest, as there's no way to really control where the twisters will make you fly. Luigi's blocks will be really helpful to create our very own twister-free staircase of blocks. Once you get to the checkpoint, you'll reach this part, and there's sadly no way to make our way above without touching one of those three coins. Even though it looks possible, the twister down there really prevents us from doing it. We'll have to be using a POW block to clear out the way. However, now that we have no more POW block, well this part will be very complicated. You need to use the bombs to break blocks and make your way up there. If a bomb blows up a coin, you collect it. This means you'll need to block the twister in the corner over there with a block, and then you'll have to place bombs in the middle row and use blocks to make sure they stay there. This took me quite a while and a couple of tries to figure it out, but once you do it, it works and this level will be done. Job 60 features more twisters and thus contain low gravity jumps. Making your way up and down this level is very confusing, but with Luigi's help we can use blocks, stars, feather cape and everything that will help us make our way to the end. Be big brain and you'll be this one. Job 64 takes place on a fast snake block going through spikes. There are tons of coins in the first part, but we can actually beat it without Luigi up until this part. There's nothing to do there, so make sure to use Luigi's blocks and you'll be able to clear it. Way more spikes and coins await along the way, but it is actually possible to beat it by using lots of blocks and other items to clear out the way. The issue with Job 65 was that you needed to hit those POW blocks to destroy the purple blocks there, but they did explode the coins around them and you'd be collecting them. Do not fear, as Luigi's blocks will now allow us to go above the purple blocks. <laughs> Once that is done, the rest of the stage is pretty much easy, so that's kinda nice. Job 67 had this one vine that we needed to climb on, and with the Super Mario Bros. 1 game theme, we can't really switch sides on the vine without touching one of those coins. Now that we can place blocks, well we can just avoid using this vine altogether and make our way to the end. Job 68 wants you to run away from those Banzai Bills in a narrow path. We can avoid dying to the Banzai Bills by using a power up, and then we can place blocks down there to avoid touching some coins, but in order to hit the on off switch and move through the level, well you'll need to use a POW block to clear out those coins, only to be met with more coins that need to be cleared and no more POW block in store. To be fair, we'd probably need around 5 POW blocks to clear this stage, so sadly, this one is not possible. The title of Job 69 is Master of Wall Jumps, but with all of those coins on the wall, we won't do much wall jumping here. Instead, I suggest just jumping, then adding blocks underneath you and making your way to the top that way. Job 70 is a speedrun level where you need to run under falling icicles. This is a very scary level to play, because you can't really place blocks above you to protect yourself. Instead, you have to put blocks above the coins and make your way right by waiting for icicles to fall down in front of you. This is insanely precise and scary, and you'll need POW blocks to clear some of the coins on the slopes. Kinda spooky, but possible. Job 71 wants you to hit on off switches to save Koopas and collect keys, which becomes a problem over there, where there are coins on the floor. Sure, you can use a POW block to clear them and that works, but as soon as you enter this next door, there is more coins that you need to clear and no more POW blocks to do it. <sighs> this one is not possible. Job 76 has a clear condition of collecting 50 coins, so this one is also not possible. Job 78 forces you to break blocks using the big Mario mushroom, and while you can place blocks to make it far in the stage, once you get to this part, well there's not much you can do to save yourself. 
you absolutely have to go over there to break blocks above you, but to do so, you need to collect those pesky coins over there. Thick Mario is too thick to fit there, so this one is impossible. Job 79 usually wants you to make your way across clear pipes to defeat skip squeaks and collect their keys, but we don't actually have to do that anymore. Just spawn a fire flower and defeat those guys without touching coins and you'll be good. Job 81 requests us not to jump or else we fail the clear condition. And as you can see, we have to make our way across these platforms, but there are coins on the way. And sadly, we can't even use that POW block. Because to break a POW block in the Super Mario Bros. 1 game style, you have to jump underneath it. And if we jump, we fail. And you cannot grab it or anything. This one is not possible. Job 83 usually takes place in this Koopa Clown car, but since this screen is scrolling way too fast, you're definitely going to have to ditch that car and place blocks to create a bridge instead, especially with all of those coins on the way. Thankfully, it is possible to make your way to the end with that weird strategy. Job 84 requires us to collect red coins to unlock the door, and we cannot do that in this quest. Red coins, they count, not possible. Job 85's main problem was this annoying thwomp that would try to crush you, but would instead crush those blocks and give us two dirty coins. Ugh, let's just fix it by using Luigi, and there we go, now that looks way better. Problem, Lathwomp? You're not going to be annoying me anymore. Job 87 is featuring some coins inside of those wooden crates, so make sure the bully enemy breaks them and not you. Oh, and to get rid of those three coins over there, you'll need a POW block. After that, it's just fun and games, and this level will be done. Job 88 does feature lots of scary jumps underneath coins and tons of annoying moles to dodge, but the real problem came from this part with the thwomp. You cannot actually go through this way without touching those coins, which is quite the problem. Thankfully, using a POW block now gets rid of those and we're good to go. Job 89 is super confusing to beat. It will require you to use your big brain in every single room if you plan on completing it coinless. First off, place blocks to avoid those coins and go up the pipe. Bring back the P-switch over there and push it. But as soon as you push it, use a power block from Luigi to clear the way and enter the door. But once you enter this room, make sure to block this cannon with some Luigi blocks, as the shell it throws bounces on some node blocks and one of them contains the dirty coins that you automatically collect if you don't block it. Grab the key and make your way back with the P-switch. And once you're done with those scary jumps, push the P-switch to avoid collecting those coins by kicking the bubum. Make your way back to the spiny shelmet and make sure to grab another P-switch as you'll need it to turn those coins into blocks and then ground pound those. Make your way to this door over there and then avoid the different flames on the way. Go into this pipe and clear this final room to make it to the flagpole. <sighs> Not gonna lie, this level is insanely complicated, insanely difficult and kinda stupid. It took me a while to figure it out, but it is possible. Job 90 is the last stop of the day, and this one is thankfully very possible. Our problem was that we had to collect those evil coins while running over there, but now we can just place some blocks to avoid touching them and we'll soon reach the end of the stage, and also the end of the quest. So, is it possible to beat Super Mario Maker 2 Story Mode without touching a single coin? Well, even with Luigi's help, no, it's still not possible to beat all of the 90 jobs, but our old record without Lugi was 44 stages completed out of 90. And with Luigi's help, we managed to get 77 done out of the 90. Now, that's what I call an improvement. That is pretty epic. Thank you so much, Luigi. You truly are a hero.